Okay, so we can finally get up to where we've been headed. Factorizing trinomials. Now we've looked at expanding out binomials. Uh, when we did that, what we ended up with were trinomials. Trinomials are just means that there are three terms in an expression. Okay, so uh, there's a particular one that we'll be looking at a bit. Um, it's called a quadratic trinomial. Uh, quadratic just basically means that the highest power is a two, right? So you'll just have some squared something, uh, and and that will be the highest power. If it's any higher than a squared, when we're not looking at quadratics anymore, we're looking at other things. All right, so last video we were looking at binomial expansion, and we ended up with this particular trinomial. And yeah, it is a quadratic, right? So we've got uh, x to the power of 2. So 2 is the highest power. It's a quadratic trinomial. Now, it's also very important that these numbers are listed in the right order. I've talked about that before. The order is very important. So you always want to make sure that you have your order and descending indice value. So we go from squared to just our unknown to our constant should be the last thing. Now, if you cast your mind back uh, a good ways, you'll remember that we were talking about linear equations and linear expressions. And, and we said that there was a general form for a linear equation which is y is equal to mx plus c. Well, that was the general form. That basically means that any linear equation would fit that form in some way. Okay, so what we'll do here is we're going to talk about the general form of trinomials, quadratics. And that is the general form right there. And you can see that the, 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 the uh, values of a and b and c can be seen in our, in our one that we've got just here. So the value for a is just a 1 because there's nothing there. The b is the 5 and the plus c, the constant, is a 6. Very good. Okay, so our, let's talk about this general form and how do we go about factorizing. Well, when we have, and I'm going to suggest that you use this method because it's the best method. It's the, it's the easiest way I've found. This uh, big X that I've got here, that's kind of, that's what I call it, the big X method. But some people call it the diamond method. It could be whatever. It's just, it's not even maths, really, that big X. It's just like a, a way to structure your thinking. It's like a graphical organizer. And so what we're going to do in every instance is we're going to look for a couple of values to put into our big X. Uh, I'm going to look for the value of B up the top. And down the bottom, I'm going to look for the value of A multiplied by C. Okay, now, these values are pretty important, and I'll explain to you why. We are going to end up looking for two numbers. We've got two spots left in our big X that we want to fill out. We're going to end up with number number one, number one, yeah, <laughs> I don't know, and number number two. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm going with that. All right, but these two numbers are special, right? These two numbers have to add together to give you the value of B, and they have to multiply together to give you the value of A times C. Okay? Now, the important thing about these numbers is that it will allow you to then create the factors, the binomial factors of our trinomial uh, quadratic. Okay, so in this instance, if our a is 1, and we'll talk more about that and why that's important soon, it'll be x plus that number 1 value, and it'll be x plus that number 2 value. Okay, um, let me pull it apart in uh, uh, with that actual uh, example. We'll do that one from uh, up here, the x squared plus 5x plus 6. Let me shift all this up. Oh, came back. Okay, so let's rewrite it. x squared plus 5x. Um, we're going to have a look at what this question is going to end up looking like. So the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need that big X, right? I'll give myself a little bit of room to put that in. So I'll use a straight line. You should probably use straight lines too. Here's my, oh, that's no, not a straight line at all. Here's my big X. My big X is here. And what values do I write? Well, I write the value of B up the top. So that'll be 5. I need to turn that straight ruler off now. 5. And I need to draw the value of A times C down the bottom. Well, A is 1 in this instance. Remember, our 
a x squared plus b x plus c that's where the position of a is so there's just a one there so one times six is six now i can't actually tell you how to figure out this next bit this bit is just up to you to figure out but you need two numbers that add together to give me the five but multiply together to give me the six now these are pretty simple i'm going to end up with the number two over here and the number three over there and because it's all positives that's all fine that'll be easy to do okie doke so now that i've got my big x done i can actually write out these different values like this i write my x squared first i then write my two as an x because it was it was from the five x two x and then my three my three x and then my six because that's the value of the constant it just is maintained now you'll see that we no longer have a trinomial expression but we've got four terms in our expression right quadinomial no I, I don't know the actual proper name it's but it's polynomial okay so now that we've got that we should be thinking oh, hang on we can factor that by grouping okay so let's do that so we'll factor this by grouping now so i'll group uh these first ones and i'll group these first ones the second ones and i'm looking for the highest common factor here which in this instance in the first will be just x and i'm looking for the highest common factor over here in this instance it will be three okay so i'm going to put my highest common factor outside of a new pair of brackets and i'm going to do some dividing you can check the other video if you want to see that in in detail and that's what i'm going to end up with i do have a common factor for each of these terms that i can then pull out the front and i'm going to put the rest into its own group and now i have just factorized that trinomial that quadratic right i've brought i've reduced it from its expanded form and i have brought it back to its factorized form however there's a very important thing that i mentioned before is that when a is equal to one when it's just x squared by itself when there's no actual number at the front here it's just a one it's actually a shortcut what i want you to do is i want you to have a look at our big x that we drew have a look at this number this two and the three well have a look at the numbers in my final answer there's a two and there's a three so if a is equal to one if this is just one i can go directly from my beginning find my big x values and i can go straight to this final step i don't have to make it a polynomial with four terms and i don't have to do the factor by grouping i can go straight to my final step and it makes it a whole lot quicker and easier but it only works when a is equal to one that's it a has to be equal to one for that to be possible let's have a look at some of them and see how we go uh all right so remember when a is equal to one so here's our trinomial now you always have to ask yourself the same questions to start with um and i haven't talked about this yet so far but the first thing is is it in order is it in order in terms of the indices yeah that is uh is there a common factor a highest common factor besides one from all three terms if so then we need to take that out first but there isn't here so we don't have to worry about that okay so we can go straight to the big x and we can look at the values i already know that i need to have it equal to my b value which is a negative eight in this one and i need to have it multiply together to add up to my a times c which in this instance will be one times 15. so i need two numbers these two numbers have to add together to give me negative eight but they have to multiply together to give me 15. so that is interesting if you think about it how can i have two numbers add to negative eight but multiply together to give me a positive number well the only way that that's possible is if both of those numbers are negative both of these numbers will have to be negative otherwise 15 down the bottom here wouldn't be positive because a positive 
only can be made by multiplying two positives or by multiplying two negatives. And we can't add two positives to get us to negative eight. So we've got two negative numbers here. So what two negative numbers will multiply together to give me 15? Well, I'd have to be three and five. So let's try that, negative five and negative three. Do they add together to give me negative eight? Well, yeah, they do. Negative five plus negative three is negative eight. Do they multiply together to give me 15? Yeah, they do. Is my a equal to one? Yes, it is. Well, I can just shortcut this now. And I can say that it'll be x minus five x minus 3. Simple. Done. Easy. We just factorized that trinomial in a very, very quick manner. And you can even check that. If we did the FOIL method on this really fast, uh, I'm going to end up with first, it'll be x squared uh, minus 5x minus 3x plus 15. Right? Uh, which will basically be minus, it'll give me what I wanted. That, those two will add together to give me eight negative 8x plus 15, and then I'll have still have my x squared. So yeah, it does. It works. It works. Let's have a look at another instance, because we're doing the examples is where you get some understanding of how it all goes. All right, here we go. Another one. Negative, oh, sorry, y squared minus y minus 12. Again, ask the questions. Is it in order? It is. Is there a highest common factor amongst the three terms? There isn't. So I know that I can, because there's three terms, I can use the big X method. So I've already got my value of B up the top, which is negative one, even though there's no one here. I have got my value of A times C down the bottom, because one times negative 12 is negative 12. Okay, so now I'm going to end up looking for some numbers that will add together to give me negative one, but will multiply together to give me negative 12. Now some hints on this one. Because we end up at negative 12, one of my numbers has to be negative. The other has to be positive. Because if it was two positive numbers, it would be positive. If two negative numbers would be positive. So if it's a negative number down the bottom of the big X, then it must be one of the numbers has to be negative. Okay, the other important clue here is that my uh, B value is negative as well. So what that means is that the negative number that I'm looking for uh, over here, it will be a bigger number than the number over here. So let's think about it. What two numbers will multiply together to give me negative 12, but will add together to give me negative 1? Well, what are the factors of 12? Well, we've got 12 and 1. No, that won't do it. 12, it's not the right number. 2 and 6? Well, negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. It's the wrong number. 4 and 3. Let's try that. Negative 4, big number. 3, smaller number. Okay, so negative 4 times 3 will give me negative 12. Negative 4 plus 3 will give me negative 1. I found my numbers. And so I can write this in. It'll be negative 4, positive 3. And that's the answer. And I factorized my quadratic. Let's have a look at another example. Okay, here is my... 10x squared minus 10 plus 2. Now you should automatically in your head go, I can't shortcut this. I don't have a value of a. But there's other questions we have to ask as well. Is it in order? Yes, it is. x squared, x constant. Very good. Uh, is there a highest common factor amongst the three terms? Well, there's a 2. I could take out of the first and the third, but not in the middle. So no, there's none. Okay, so let's think about what we need to do. Well, let's draw up our big X. And here's the big X. I filled it out already, simply to save some time. I have my X, big X value up the top of B, which is negative 1. My big X value down the bottom is actually 10 times negative 2. A times C, it'll be negative 20. I'm still looking for two values. One value that will be a negative, because the number down the bottom is a negative, and the number will be bigger because the number up the top is a negative 1. And I found them. Negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. And negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. But the way that I have to arrange this is slightly different. I can't shortcut this. I can't do it. So what I have to do is I rewrite my trinomial. Instead of having three terms, I write it as a polynomial with four terms. And I write it as... 10x squared, because this x squared doesn't change, this value doesn't change, negative 5x plus negative uh, plus 4x, 4x 
minus my constant of 2. Now that I have four terms, I can factor by grouping. Okay, so I will do that. I will look at this group here. I will look at this group here. The highest constant uh, factor of this group will be 5x. The highest constant factor of this other uh, second group will be 2. Uh, and so I'll pull those outside of a new pair of brackets each, uh, and I'll bring that down. Now, the real key to this is if you end up, and I can see some people making mistakes here, but if you don't end up with the exact same value in your brackets, then you've made an error with your highest common factor. Like if this had ended up being plus, well, that means I would have taken a negative 2 out and it wouldn't have worked. So I can now regroup these and I end up with my factors and I factorize something where A wasn't equal to 1. Okay, so that's the process. That's what you do for factorizing trinomial 